I just wanted to start off though by giving uh, sort of a broader picture of you know what's going on and why we're doing this. Um, you know, just to, and then hone it down into exactly why what we did with the course and why it's important to address in these three contexts. So I just wanted to start by saying I think that you know everything has an impact. It's clear that everything we do has an impact, whether we realize it or not. Uh, you know, that breakfast you wake up and eat in the morning that has an impact. Um, Maybe you ride a wooden bike around, well the materials that went into that bike have an impact. Uh, maybe you work in a tree house somewhere, uh, you know, that's a very good place to work, but there's also impacts associated with heating that building and constructing that building, the energy. Uh, maybe you make paper airplanes, there's impacts associated with those materials as well. Um, and then the ink in your pen, the paper you're writing on, every single thing we do has an impact. And the complicating factor is that we don't control what happens along the entire value chain. We use things, but we maybe aren't totally aware of what's going on. And so, and the other thing is that it's a very complex issue. So we need, uh, we need a lot of different people working on solving the impact issues that we have and identifying what's going on with each of these impacts. And so we need people from the biologists, to the lawmakers, uh, to the consumers, to the chemists, uh, and in business, and especially in classrooms, we need to start developing a capacity to have people engaging in activities that come up with bigger solutions to this really big problem that we have. Uh, and so I think also then, there's a clear need for institutional uh, education, because right now we've got uh, a bunch of people trying to do something to become sustainable, uh, but maybe it's not so clear what their position is, because they haven't thought about where they fit into the puzzle. Uh, in terms of what their, how their skills fit into solving this larger issue. Um, so when they're talking about quantifying impacts of something and trying to engage somebody in a conversation, it's not so clear where the line is and the borders between their roles in the bigger game. Uh, and once we have identified those roles, we can sit around in a circle and have a nice conversation uh, because we're all speaking the same language, we're all identifying impacts that are in a consistent language, we're not just saying something's recycled, we're saying there's a number associated with that recycling. Activity and there's a number associated with that reuse activity, and there's a number just associated with those impacts as well. Uh, and then we can start to come up with some progress. So that's sort of the, the, the bigger plan is that we're all working together, speaking the same language, and we're going to get somewhere with this uh, issue. And we need this institutional education. And so, what we created was this course at UBC because the impact that we identified, uh, civil engineers, uh, is the impact of buildings. So we're we're creating uh, impacts through our consumption of materials and the construction of buildings. Uh, and so at UBC, we've got about 5 million square feet of area constructed. But we don't know anything about this, this square foot area in terms of its material impacts. We don't know anything about this square footage uh, in terms of its, uh, what materials are in there. Uh, but we do now. But we do now because of those three contexts. These students saw that there were impacts. They got uh, engaged in the project. And then they got educated, and now they're going to be here and to talk to you guys about that. Um, and I just want to give you guys a little synopsis of those three contexts in action. Because obviously there went a lot more than just doing numbers and sitting in a classroom. These, all, all these students went out and they got into these buildings. They took tape measures of things. Uh, you know, they found out you know, that there's more to a demolition. They found out about different types of bricks. Uh, well, different ways of looking at buildings, you know, it's not just an academic building, we're learning in these places, we're using these things, and that's why we have these buildings, because they serve functions for us, and so what they wanted to do is find a way to create more responsible building. That's my... <laughs> so that's what we're all here to do, we all want to know how we create more, uh, or, sorry, more environmentally conscious and well thought out buildings so we can reduce our environmental impact overall, and still maintain the same service and performance levels uh, that we have now. So you are at the representation. This is about green building, but I think you're going to get a whole lot more out of this because there's a lot more things to consider uh, when talking about this single issue. And uh, so I'm just going to pass it off to the students. So welcome, and I hope you guys enjoy the presentation. on UBC's Vancouver campus. Uh, in this presentation today, we're going to quickly run down uh, 
basically what LCA is and how it applies to UBC. Uh, we're going to look at LCA in terms of our project specifically and how it applies to the goal and scope of uh, our assessments. Uh, we're also going to show the methods that we used and uh, how they apply to UBC sustainability initiatives. Uh, we're also going to finally show you the results that came out of our study and uh, some of the recommendations that we came up with as well. Uh, we've got a few conclusions at the end as well just, that just sort of tie in and summarize all of our findings. So life cycle assessment, or LCA as it's commonly known as, uh, is a scientific method of uh, analyzing the environmental impacts of a given product. Uh, this can be taken a step further and also used to analyze a set of products, or in our case, we're looking at whole buildings and uh, products that they're made up of. Uh, LCA gives quantifiable results for a number of impacts to the environment, uh, and this is over the entire lifespan of a building. So this goes right from the uh, material resource extraction up at the top here, and all the way around to uh, the disposal of material in between the, the stages of uh, manufacturing uh, all the way to demolition. So the uh, LCA is based on, the LCA procedure is based on a uh, procedure set out by the International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, and uh, namely two specific standards that they have, uh, 14,040 and 14,044. And these basically just set a precedent for how an LCA should be conducted. Uh, and in doing so, they allow for all LCAs to be comparable in the end. So our project here was part of a uh, civil engineering elective class, and it was led by, of course, Rob. And uh, it is the largest uh, building LCA that has been undertaken in North America, and it was done within a class that is the only known undergraduate class that uh, is looking specifically at LCA and teaching LCA. Uh, over the past two years, 29 academic buildings have been modeled on UBC's Vancouver campus by students like ourselves. Uh, the total uh, the total buildings are, 50, so far we've modeled over 50% of the buildings on UBC, or the exact 53% of the buildings. Uh, this course ties in with the sustainability academic strategy of UBC, and basically what that is is just to uh, push uh, sustainability a little bit more into the university's mainstream. Uh, they push for a few more courses in sustainability and getting students and faculty a little bit more involved in understanding what sustainability is. Also within this strategy they have a campus as a living lab initiative and what that is is just to uh, get the knowledge that's being taught in the university to come back in and uh, sort of be implemented in the building operations and that sort of thing within uh, UBC so we can further the sustain, you know, the title of the most sustainable university. So the goal of our study, uh, in particular, was to uh, is to eventually model all the academic buildings and all the other buildings on campus as well. And from the results that we pull out, uh, define a relative measure from which uh, all future construction at UBC can be uh, compared with. And this can be new construction, renovations, or demolitions. Uh, the hope from this is that it can help the UBC Sustainability Office make decisions when it comes to uh, these types of construction and see which is better, whether it's better environmentally to uh, renovate a building or just you know, tear it down and start from, uh, start from scratch. So the scope of the study, uh, basically when we're talking about buildings, uh, we all model academic buildings, and this is really the uh, original structure and envelope of each building. Uh, this entails uh, basically everything that's uh, permanent in the building, including the foundations, uh, floors, interior and exterior walls, uh, columns, beams, uh, roofs, and stairs, and as well as uh, any internal and external wall coverings, which could be uh, gypsum or exterior wall cladding. Uh, we didn't take into account uh, mechanical systems and uh, sort of non-permanent fixtures, and this is discussed a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, the basic functional unit that we used was one square foot of academic building space. Uh, this is because all the buildings on campus are different sizes, and this allows us to compare all the impacts for one uh, comparable unit across the board. Uh, our project only looked at the cradle to gate stages of uh, a building's life cycle, and so what this is is from the resource extraction to the manufacturing stages to the on-site construction of the building. Uh, we omitted things like the occupancy and maintenance uh, life of the building, as well as the uh, de decommissioning and disposal. And again, this is uh, talked about a little bit later in the report. I'm now going to pass it on to Don, and he's going to talk about the methodology. 